foot wide tarp, 25 feet long. Can anyone differentiate which side was covered and which side wasn't covered? Because I can't. And actually, when we looked at this, this was on all four sides of the field. We saw absolutely no difference in whether it was covered or whether it was uncovered. Now, Mr. Fogelman was here about a month, month and a half ago, and he actually showed a video of Dr. Rodrigo Worley, and I want to elaborate further on that because he wanted to focus on Dr. Rodrigo Worley's uh, his field trial. He did one also in Wisconsin, and all of what I'm going to share with you at this point was provided to me by Dr. Rodrigo Worley. Dr. Rodrigo Worley actually sprayed seven acres in an extend field. It's here in the orange, seven acres. His trial is somewhat similar to mine. And he sprayed 20, there was 23 acres of non-extend that's around it here in green. So he had a total of 30 acres. I had 240 acres. So a little bit difference in terms of scale. He treated his on July the 11th at 11 a.m. in Wisconsin. 81 degrees Fahrenheit. He had a maximum temp of almost 86 degrees, 85.5 degrees. Now, like I did, he went in and he set up a tarp in the downwind direction for him, which was north. The wind's blowing from the south. And then also he's going to measure one transect here on the south. Now question, would we expect to see damage here on the south if the wind never blows in a southward direction? I don't care if you have a volatile product or not, you're not going to see damage if all of the wind is blowing in this direction for the course of the experiment. So here is his data. In the north side of the field where he had his plots covered and he had non-covered, he went across the field rating and what he concluded Volatility was a major component of the overall movement and injury was not observed on the south side of the field because the wind was never southward. It was stated he didn't have damage except on one side of the field. The reason he only had one da uh, damage on one side of the field was because the wind only blew in a southward direction. Did he have substantial volatility, folks? He actually had more volatility again than he did physical drift. If you look at the contribution of volatility to the overall damage here, this is the majority of the damage is due to volatility. Now I want to read, this is what Dr. Worley sent me. I asked him to summarize his trial and send it to me. In a direct quote, he said, We observed no injury on the upwind direction that would be the south side, other than the non-extend row that was directly exposed to dicamba during the application. He says injury was observed in the downwind direction, or the north side of the field, in both the plastic covered and non-covered areas. Thus, particle and vapor drift <coughs> caused injury in the downwind direction, the north side. He says that 14 days after treatment, one could not tell the difference between the plastic covered and the non-covered areas. He says the injury level actually statistically were identical. They were the same. Then he goes on and he mentions what he did at 28 days. But I want to take the end of it here. He says, it's important to mention that the wind blew primarily towards the same south to north direction for the from the application until day three after treatment. And oh, by the way, he says, a significant rainstorm happened on the night of day two after treatment. A day and a half after he sprayed, there was a rainfall event. Well, here's my question. What happens to the volatility of dicamba once we have a rainfall event? Let's answer that question. But before we do that, I'm going to conclude this. I think Dr. Rodrigo Worley's Wisconsin results match the Arkansas findings in that volatility is a major contributor to off-target movement of extendamax. Now, here's some research that I conducted this year where we went and took air samplers and we measured concentration. This concentration here, I'm going to report it in nanograms per liter. And we went out on May the 21st, May the 28th, and June the 4th. But when we did additional research besides this, but the thing I want to point out, we made a labeled application of Extendamax 
and we began to monitor the vapors coming off. And what you notice is, on this orange bar, all of a sudden he gets flat. On this bar here, on May, what is that? May the 21st, it's all of a sudden flat. May 28th, it's all of a sudden flat. Why? The reason is, is because we had a rainfall event and volatility ceases once you have a rainfall event. That's what the data says. So I think Dr. Worley only had a day and a half of volatility based on the fact that he had a significant rainfall event the evening of the second day. Now I'm going to move on and take a look at some research that we conducted this summer where we looked at taking various herbicides and this is in what we call a low tunnel trial where we put them out and we measure the volatility as it relates to injury on soybeans. And the thing that I want to point out in this trial is we mixed Ingenia plus Roundup Power Max and then I had another product which is basically Ingenia alone. It doesn't have any glyphosate in it. Ingenia plus another product doesn't have glyphosate in it. And what I noticed in this trial was once we pull the glyphosate or Roundup Power Max out of the Ingenia, what happened to the volatility? It, it decreased. It decreased substan folks, substantial dec uh, decrease in terms of volatility. Now, also I'm going to point out, and I've, I've shown some of you before, this is an experimental herbicide. I'm not going to say a lot about it. Experimental dicamba plus glyphosate. And this one gets me excited. I'm looking forward to working with this in 2019. But here was the photograph where we had the experimental dicamba plus glyphosate. And this is strictly volatility in a low tunnel trial. And you see very little, if any, cupping. And look at the degree of cupping that we had with Ingenia plus Roundup Pyramax 2. You can see some stark differences. So with that, all of a sudden, I began to hypothesize that we could potentially be influencing the volatility of dicamba once we placed Roundup in the tank. I shared with the board on September the 20th some pH data. I didn't have any other data to support it, but the pH of Extendamax in a spray solution was 5.54. The pH of Extendamax plus Roundup Pyramax 2 was 5.01. So we put Roundup Pyramax in the tank, and what happened to the pH? Went down. I was talking to a colleague, Dr. Tom Mueller, here a couple of weeks ago. Dr. Mueller told, tells me he did the same exact experiment. Put Roundup Pyramax in Ingenia and Extendamax. I said, what did you see, Dr. Mueller? He said, I went from 5.5 down to 5.0. I said, that's interesting. I saw the same result. Also then, we went back in and we did a low tunnel trial where we measured, actually measured in nanograms, the amount of dicamba coming off of this. This is not per liter, it's just total dicamba coming off through our air sampler. And what we saw was we had more than double the amount of dicamba that came off where we had Extendamax plus Powermax versus where we had Extendamax alone. The other thing I want to point out is we assessed injury on soybeans and look at, we had what, 12, 13% 12, injury with Extendamax. We put Extendamax plus Roundup Pyramax in there and we go to 30, 31, 32% injury. The point there is we had a good relationship between the injury that we saw as a function of volatility as well as our ability to quantify the volatility of dicamba and it appears it is very closely related to the pH of the spray solution. 